So, hello again. Here we go for another tutorial. Um, I'm recording this in between, so um, the paint I just have mixed won't get dry. I'm painting um, three eliminators in Imperial Fist colors, so the priming I am use is the same as for my yellow, but um, rather than painting yellow again. This tutorial will be about um, painting red desert camo cloaks. Um, for the first um, base color I mixed Morning Brown and Aerial Yellow one on one and I apply those two in a thin covering layer on all the parts of the camo cloak that will be red. In my case that's the outside of it. I'm doing that in two or three layers so that I tint and cover the pre-shading that I've done with the primer and so that I keep a nice smooth transition leaving some bright spots on top where color would be lightest. And as long as the first layer dries on this one, don't forget the cowl. I will do the second one, then return to the first at a second layer of the base color. Going back for the second layer, I focus on giving a bit more depth to the parts that lie a bit more in shadow and to make sure that all the areas are covered in that rust red base color. That should be enough. So our, se our secondary colors will be Bergman's Glow and Scorch Brown. Not sure what the new equivalent for Scorch Brown is. Um, you might have to ch check some paint reference charts or just go for a dark, dark brown. It's not dried bark, it's a bit lighter, but dried bark could work as well. So what I do now is simply draw those grizzly lines on the cloak going roughly horizontal and going from drawing the brush to stippling to drawing. Around points like here I 
try to follow the flow of the cloak we also don't want to do too much because we don't want to obscure the model camouflage of course what the sense of the camouflage would be exactly that but as we want to see what we have painted it would make no sense to obscure everything by adding these patterns too accurate. Also the scale of my pattern is a little bit bigger as it would be properly scaled down just for the ease of the effect. Could go a little bit smaller with all these next step will be painting smaller dotted lines on top of these with the bookman's glow let's see where I have the appropriate appropriate brush for that Like before, I try to go as irregular as possible. To create a nice pattern. Don't overpaint too much of the dark brown and don't go too far outside. and try not to be too regular with this when you apply for example dots or stuff like that to come a cloak it's, it's all too easy to fall into geometric patterning So we walk a thin line here. might want to give some areas a second go to differentiate those three colors a bit more. After that I will mix a bit of bone, what that's called, skeleton bone on screaming skull into the Bookman's Glow and give it a few dots here and there. Not too much. And as you you might have noticed that I'm doing the three dots go along to a different area doing three dots that the that's those uh, geometric patterns 
that I have spoken about. Um, we could also mix our little bit of the base color into the Bookman's Glow and just highlight the most prominent folds. Just like that. Next is Skaven Blight Dinge for some more speckles and the final shading of the cloak. I'm trying to do larger and smaller shapes all around all over all over the place so to say to break up the stripe pattern a little bit if you want to have that those dots smaller you also could use a sponge technique so we'll let these points dry just a little bit. In the meantime, we're painting the Skaven Blight Dinge into the most pronounced folds of the cloak. And glazing from down up to where the cloth flows. So that right around, right next to our highlight we want the darkest spot of grey then we'll get a nice shaded cloak we won't use washes on this one because I I'm rather fond of how it looks well, at the moment. And the Bosches would pull in the more wrong places nonetheless. The Skaven Blight Dinge is a rather supple, subtle grey, supple, subtle. So you will only be able to see the full effect when it's totally dry. So rather than giving these areas one thick layer do it in two or three thin layers until you get the desired effect. That's it. Mm. We might get that cloak 
an overall dry brush together with the rest of the model when all the weathering is done and of course uh, around those parts where the Martian iron earth will later be added there will also be a blending with that color so the cloak goes along smoothly with the base colors or the colors of the base in that case. I hope um, this tutorial helped you. You can um, of course paint uh, every uh, uh, you can paint this pattern in totally different colors. Um, here, experiment a bit. Think of the environment you want to put your miniatures in and then choose the colors accordingly. Stay tuned, be excellent to each other. Thanks for watching.